How do they fare tonight, Debbie, with the money on the table? Well, this is about rebounding and tempo. That's the way this game's going to be played, and St. Mary's is not going to make it easy on UConn to get transition opportunities. Both teams are going to have to execute. I think we're going to have a short possession game. Who can impose their will early on this one as we are off and running here in the round of 32 with the Huskies controlling to begin. Alex Caravan, highly touted freshman, now to Hawkins, and he turns it over. Hawkins had the struggles in the first half before he finally broke out, and has been struggling for a couple of games. Debbie, an auspicious start. I think Logan Johnson has been their best player all season, and he's going to have to be effective scoring the basketball and being a secondary ball handler against UConn's quarter court pressure. St. Mary's knocking off VCU, the 12th seed here on Friday. With the help of that kid, Alex Dukas. That's exactly how he started the other night. You're going to see a heavy dose of a lot of ball screen offense out of St. Mary's. And on the other side, not so much for Dan Hurley's team. More of a motion team. And Saxon's got to be able to handle this matchup with a little bit of help. Adama Sonogo gets right to work. And Sonogo is so skilled and so powerful and off the main basket. Here comes the full court pressure by UConn. Sonogo, the Big East leader in scoring 28 points in 25 minutes the other night in their victory over Rick Pitino's Gales. Got to make a quick decision when that hedge comes on that ball screen. Johnson a swing to Dukas, five to shoot. Hawkins got his feet tangled up. This will be on Hawkins' first. Shot clock was down at around five seconds. Look at the patience of Sonogo. Waits till the dig, leaves. Then he goes one-on-one -on -one over that left shoulder. Saxon is going to have to be able to contend with that matchup one-on-one -on -one a lot. Tonight. Johnson trying to go bounce pass underneath to Dukas. Well played as the Huskies deflected out of bounds. Just one second coming off the shot clock. Situational offense, Spiro. When the ball is dead, both teams are going to have to execute well because there's not going to be any easy baskets given up on either side. Here's Mitchell Saxon, who was sensational in their first round game against VCU. Johnson with 10 to shoot. Newton trying to track him down to Haney. Quick pass. This is the runner. Bowen, no. Fight for it underneath. Sonogo shoved out of bounds. And we're going to get a whistle here on Mitchell Saxon. That's going to be his first. You don't want to see your big pick up a cheap one when you know you've got to contend with the size and front line power of Connecticut. And right here you see just off balance both players. Sonogo doing a great job of hustling to draw that foul. Mitchell Saxon, the junior, hasn't faced many like Adama Sonogo. What kind of fight can he put up? There aren't many like Sonogo. <laughs> Sonogo again on the box. Look how deep he gets off the bounce. Little drop step by Saxon held his ground. Debbie, one thing about this Gales defense, they're just so disciplined. They're disciplined, all five rebounds. And because of that, they don't put a lot of pressure on UConn's transition defense. That's why it's about quarter court execution tonight. Corner three from Dukas wouldn't go. So still tied here. Two and a half gone by. So no go to Caravan. He can stroke it from deep. A little bit short. And a loose change corralled by Bowen. Already his second rebound. St. Mary's 27 wins this season, the at-large co-regular season champions in the WCC with Gonzaga. Sonogo doing a great job of stretching out that ball screen with that hedge. Here's Mahaney, the freshman, hanging, puts it down. And a good early sign for St. Mary's. So important for Aiden Mahaney, who did not score, as AJ said, in the game the other night. He went 0 for 5 from the floor. He was first team all conference in the WCC as a freshman. Just had a sensational season for Randy Bennett. Hawkins lets it fly. So Connecticut a little bit cold here at the start. One of their first four, they've missed two from deep. And Jordan Hawkins, all 13 of his points against Iona came in the second half. He was slow to get started 
the other night. Saxon. Now that Johnson gets his first look, turn back. Newton get a piece. Here comes Jackson, local kid, grew up in Amsterdam, about a 30-minute drive from here. They get it into the corner. That's a three. Big shot for Tristan Newton to get the Huskies their first triple of the night. Newton, the East Carolina transfer, as this will be an offensive foul and a St. Mary's turnover. Early one-point lead for the Huskies. I'll tune into Creator League's 2v2 season featuring viral creators Cash Nasty, Jenna Brandy, Devontae Friga, and more. Watch live on the Creator League YouTube channel as they compete for a chance to play in the championship game in Houston on April the 2nd. Debbie, you have been impressed with Logan Johnson, Defensive Player of the Year in the WCC. Watch right here how Logan Johnson is going to chase Hawkins off the screen, and then Hawkins is going to come back. Watch the change of pace. There's one screen, the acceleration, and he gets to the other side with a great closeout to contest from three. There's Sonogo on the box. Saxon already playing with a foul. Sonogo very wisely as they draw it off out of the timeout. I mean, look how deep. That's two feet in the front of the rim. That's going to be two points, and it allows UConn to put on this pressure. It's really hard to speed up St. Mary's. They play at a lower pace. Now one of the slower paced teams in the country, very deliberate. Here's Johnson. Puts it in the deck against Newton. Contact, and he's headed to the free throw line. Not only is he the defensive player of the year in their conference, he's their leading scorer. He gets to his left hand, and watch him get into the chest of Newton. Keeps his focus on the finish to get to the line. Johnson against VCU did not come off the floor. He played all 40 minutes and recorded the first double-double of his career. 12 points, 10 rebounds. He is as tough as nails. Spear on this end. St. Mary's is going to have to find a, an answer for Sonogo because right now playing him straight up, he has been too effective scoring inside when he catches deep. Caravan into the paint. This is Jackson. He can stroke it. In and out, and a rebound by Johnson. And Saxon already has that early foul, Debbie, uh, Debbie so he's got to be even more careful. There's a three. Dukas splash. This is a St. Mary's team that will make eight threes a game on the average. They really move the ball well. Six straight points for the Gales. So 10-7 as we come up on a 14-minute mark. This is Newton. A beautiful run pass, dropping dimes to no go. Way to draw it up by Danny Hurley. What a beautiful middle ball screen. Putting Saxon in that mix. Sonogo has six of their first nine points. This is Dukas, boy, he's feeling it. And St. Mary's starting to ignite. Back-to-back -back triples. Looking to score quickly before Connecticut gets organized in their quarter court. You know how this team is going to defend. The question was, could they hit enough shots? Here's a steal. Johnson steps into the passing lane. Then Mahaney underneath. What a pass. This will be a goaltend. And count the basket underneath for Kyle Bowen. Defense into the transition for the Gales. This is eight consecutive points in St. Mary's transition game, putting some pressure on UConn. You gotta be opportunistic. If you've got an open shot, you gotta take it quickly before they get locked in. Traveling violation. They say that Newton shuffled his pivot foot and the Huskies turn it over again. They're third already. Well, you can watch Lab Beds games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. UConn subs to really heat it up right here on the defensive end, Spiro. That's when they go with some serious quickness in the backcourt. But Mahaney, he's playing with early confidence. Already his second field goal, and it's an eight-point St. Mary's lead. He looks like a completely different player than we saw the other night. 
just more confident, more aggressive with the ball. Andre Jackson sizes it up. Not even close. They don't make him hit one before they come out with a longer closeout. Dukic puts it on the deck. Out front to Johnson, the reset. Hassan Diara has checked into the game for the Huskies. Here comes Bowen, sealed off baseline, 10 to shoot. And they're going to burn a timeout. Don't want to make any mistakes as they will take their first and everyone will catch their breath. Randy Bennett pleased with what he's seeing so far. Sudden death situation in Albany. Which of these two teams will be punching their ticket to the Sweet 16? St. Mary's on a 7-0 run. They've made five of their last six. Alex Dukas, 17 the other night. In transition, spotting up behind the three-point line. Back-to-back -back triples, putting some pressure on UConn in the transition game. And some nice balance with what they've done during this spurt. Adama Sonogo sat down with 13.39 about a minute ago in game time. And since then, Debbie, the game completely changed. Well, he's three for four inside, and I didn't think St. Mary's could guard him. But I think this is part of Danny Hurley's rotation as to get clinging some minutes. And we know he will go with what is working. Harry Wessels has checked into the game, and the freshman picks up his first second round coverage of the NCAA Division One Women's Basketball Championship continues tonight. ABC, ESPN, and ESPN2. For more information on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. So Harry Wessels is a 7-1 freshman, Spiro. He plays about seven minutes a game, and while clinging's on the floor, I think it's a good time to give Saxon a rest for that one foul. A little soft zone. Jackson left it short. And Bowen comes out of the fray with possession. And this is fourth rebound already. Bowen, a rugged defender for Randy Bennett and the Gales. He's a good D and three guy. He can shoot it. Johnson turns the corner, shattered by DR, misses off glass. Fight for it underneath. Klingon clears. A couple of freshmen, seven footers, banging bodies. Jackson probing his pass, nearly stolen. Diara, oh, beautiful pass, clinging to finish. Well, UConn switching sides of the floor, gets St. Mary's just a half a pass late. Good finish around the rim. Just an exquisite pass by Diara, the Texas A&M transfer, to cut it to six. Mahaney, with a couple early, he's cooled off a little bit. Here comes Diara on the push. Weaves his way through a crowd. Gales fans wanted to turn over, no whistle. This is Joey Calcaterra. Aline. Three-pointer from the corner from Diara won't go. Fight for it. Gales have it. Mahaney. And he's going to shoot free throws. Boy, he is playing with a reckless abandon here at the start. The freshman turning the page from his struggles. And a good start. Six points, St. Mary's lead on TNT. Welcome back to Albany here with Coach Danny Hurley. You mentioned coming in that you wanted to speed up this St. Mary's team. You rolled out the press early. What else do you want to see in the half court and transition from your guys? Well, just, you know, the difference in the game is losing Dukas twice in the half court. Well, once versus pressure and once on a lift in a ball screen game. Obviously, you know, we've got to take away rim twos, and obviously we can't give Dukas clean looks at three. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. All right, AJ, a lot to think about for Danny Hurley and his staff. So they've got their hands full here at the start. Six point St. Mary's lead. It will be Aiden Mahaney, the freshman at the free throw line for two. To try to build on this lead, Debbie. How impressed have you been so far with what we've seen from the Gales? You know what, Spiro? There's a lot to be excited about for St. Mary's with the way they started there. They've only turned the ball over one time. They're shooting 54%. They haven't given up any offensive rebounds to the top offensive rebounding team. And Mahaney has been a threat. He's going to the free throw line here, but it's allowed Randy Bennett to manage the game and get Wessels some time with Saxon with that one foul. So here is Aiden Mahaney. Just a, a revelation this season as a first-year kid for Randy Bennett. He was one of only three freshmen in the entire country 
to put up 15 points per game and better than 40% from three. I heard the great story, his family, his brother Noah, his mom Patsy is here. She still lives only about a 10 minute drive away from campus. He's home often. Those freshmen like those home cooked meals. And you know what? I know that Noah is an inspiration to Aiden. I understand it and I know what an incredible lift that can be for him to have his brother here with him. And you know it better than anyone, Debbie. Yes, my son Frankie has Down syndrome and uh, he's an inspiration to us every day. Frankie, one of our favorites. As that one is knocked out of bounds at the 10:30 mark, Mahaney will sit and just the, the psychological lift. There's, there's Noah here in the seats, always by his brother's side. Had a chance to visit with Noah the other day while he was in the lobby hanging out with his mom and dad. What a nice young man! <laughs> There's a smile that just lights up the room. Beautiful looking stroke. That is a lean. Naheem Ali really sprints into that three-pointer. Gave him a nice little boost the other day off the bench against Iona. Hit a couple of threes in that game. A thousand-point career score for Danny Hurley. Augustus Marshall Lotus has checked in for Andy Bennett. Johnson in trouble. Look at the pressure by UConn has picked up. Look for a backdoor opportunity. Three to shoot. Bowen. Trying to create, that's not really his game. Suffocating Huskies defense. And Marshall Onis should know that even though Bowen was open, I think he had an opportunity. He can't turn down a shot late in the clock. And you gotta know who you're delivering the pass to. Yeah, Marshall Onis, Debbie, was so good the other day with Mahaney's struggles, came in, really solidified that backup lead guard spot when they really needed it. He played 22 outstanding minutes for St. Louis. So UConn once again showing life. Aline now clinging on the box. Caravan nearly stepped out of bounds. Here's Calcaterra curling contact. Strong move to the cup. And he'll step to the charity stripe for Connecticut. Foul charge to Marshall Onis. How sweet it is indeed. Arkansas awaits the winner of this one in Las Vegas. Houston and UCLA are through as well. And Debbie, something about those Jersey schools. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something about the Jersey schools. As the madness is definitely upon us. So here's Joey Calcaterra. What an addition he's been. San Diego transfer, West Coast kid, grew up in the Bay Area. Graduate transfer. So seven straight points for the Huskies. And a strong contingent that has made the trek from stores, making themselves hurt. Feels like a home game for UConn. I don't think Danny liked that call. As Sunogo will come in, Klingon will sit. We'll look for Danny Hurley to get the ball to Sunogo. He's very good in the middle third in their ball screen action. He does have some range, but he's been very effective with his back to the basket early in this one. That last whistle charged to Calcaterra, his second. Dales have not scored in more than four minutes. Johnson underneath. Return to sender. Sonogo the block, and then Bowen off the loose ball draws contact. So a lucky little bounce for St. Mary's after the block by Sonogo. I mean, this is just good clock awareness. You try to get into the chest of the shot blocker. Sonogo doing an outstanding job right here, and then the loose change belongs to Bowen to get to the line. And that is the second personal against Jordan Hawkins, so a big early call that uh, Danny Hurley is thinking about. Well, you can watch whip around coverage of all men's games on a computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with Fast Break, presented by Nissan in the March Madness Live app. Scan the QR code now to download. Kyle Bowen out of Perth, Australia. Can't overstate the importance that he has had with this team. Extend St. Mary's lead back to three. 
There's the foul trouble that Danny Hurley is thinking about as we have crossed the nine minute mark. And this is going to be a Connecticut turnover. Their fourth. Looked like Jackson stepped out of bounds and did not reestablish. We'll have to get some more clarification from the officials, but it is a turnover nonetheless. With 8.30 left to play. If you take yourself out of bounds without being forced out of bounds, you can't be the first person to touch the ball. So that was the call. There's the drought. Marshall Lotus couldn't hit. Calcaterra. Nicely done by Caravan to tap it out. Now should no go that deep post position too easy. Two feet in the paint. Two points, UConn. So good working without the ball. One point game. 7.50 left before halftime. And you see what Sunogo did in the paint and what he continues to do. Johnson misses. Aline wants to push. This is Calcaterra. Aline lets it fly. And a good box out, keeping the Huskies the number one offensive rebounding team in the country off the glass. What's the call here? Offensive on Johnson. What a play by Calcaterra. Welcome back to Albany here with Coach Randy Bennett. Um, obviously a game of runs, momentum shifts. What do you need to do to get some more separation in this one? Ooh, I don't know. I, I think you just got to play it media to media, try and try and win each media. But I don't think there's, I don't think there's going to be huge separations. They play good defensively. They're not letting us get easy transition. We missed some buckets. I thought we should hit our guards missed some layups that I think they'll hit and we missed a couple free throws but we're doing a pretty good job of uh, keeping out of transition and not letting them get second shots and that's what we need to keep doing. Thank you coach. Good luck. Thank you. All right AJ one thing they're certainly talking about in that St. Mary's locker room Debbie is how to slow down Sunogo who has just picked up where he left off on Friday. He's four for five the rest of the team three for twelve he's getting deep position he's burying his defender in the rim. When space opens up, he's able to get inside, and then he's defending on the other end as well. He is a handful tonight for St. Mary's. You're going to have to get more pressure on the ball, and they might have to consider trying to push him up the lane a little bit more. And then, because he's catching it so deep, Spiro, it's too far to go to dig. you got to make him catch the ball up the lane, not in front of the rim, because if it's in front of the rim, you can't help. Easier said than done. Yeah, that's right, because he's a big, <laughs> Strong, 245 pound, 6'9 frame, who's determined to catch it deep. And Randy Bennett also cognizant of trying to keep Saxon out of foul trouble. He picked up an early whistle, playing with one. We've already seen the freshman Harry Wessels off the bench. He didn't play it all the other night as we get an offensive foul here and another Connecticut turnover. This time they pull Sonogo away from the bucket. They try to dive him on a weak side screen. Foul charge to a lean. That's their sixth. Team foul and first against Alin. At this end of the floor, St. Mary's has missed seven straight shots. Saxon right on cue. Really good decision with the basketball because the tag from the weak side was late. You had two options there because Logan Johnson was open outside the three point line as well. Well, how good was Saxon the other day? Their best offensive player, 17 points in their first round win over VCU. The junior out of Seattle. Newton probing. A little bit too much of a loose change corralled by Saxon. Right now, every time down the floor, Sonogo should get a touch. Six and change left to play in this opening half. St. Mary's. Co-regular season champions out of the West Coast Conference. And the Yukon Huskies doing battle here at Albany. Spiro, Connecticut is hedging with an Aiden Mahaney ball screen. Otherwise, sonogo has been in drop coverage with others. Changing up the personnel. Beautiful pass. They find Johnson. At the fire with one to shoot. Sonogo with a one-handed rebound. His fourth. Aline. Sonogo can shoot it from out there. But here he comes. Can't take that pump fake. 
That's a good point. Give him that three-pointer, Debbie. Look at Sonogo's numbers. Just incredible, the run that he is on as he is into double digits already. See, so drop coverage there on that time, mixing it up on Mahaney. Keep so, him off balance with his decision-making skill. That was his first three-point attempt of the night. He's now two or five shooting. Here's Sonogo. Jackson. Caliban for me. Connecticut so far is two of ten from three. Mahaney against Jackson will bring it back out and reset. And we've got an injured St. Mary's Gale here. We didn't quite see what happened. Oh boy. Alex Dukas looks like he's favoring. Oh boy. He was reaching for his lower back initially. Scary looking sequence. Bottom left of your picture. You see right there kind of reaching for his lower back. Oh boy, Debbie, that looks scary. Oh, wow. Doug Shaw's right there, immediately stops. Mm. Play. Oh boy. We just hate to see this. Alex Dukas, indispensable part of the St. Mary's team. There are his parents. They're going to take him straight back to the locker room, Spiro. Mm. This goes, uh, this will be a smaller lineup on the floor for St. Mary's without Dukas, who was taken back to the locker room. Marshall Lonis, the spin puts it down, big basket. And psychologically, after seeing Dukas helped into the locker room, three point St. Mary's lead. This is a tough, gritty team for Randy Bennett. So no goal. If it's on Wexen, that's his second. Uh, Saxon, it's his second. Debbie, mm. mm. talk to me, Ben. Oh, the psychological aspects. When you see Dukas walk off. He was so huge for him. How do they fear here next couple of minutes? Well, I mean, they got to go small because they don't have a lot of depth. So they they got three guards on the floor. Boy, Jackson, they left him unaccounted for. So UConn immediately has more size at every position. And he's been their best shooter outside the three-point line. So Jackson's numbers against Iona was huge. Mahaney. Traveling violation. Well, meantime, we have just been told by St. Mary's that Alex Dukas is done for the half at least. Try to get more with AJ as quickly as we can. And she had to be helped into the locker room. Sonogo on the box, guarded by Wessels. Little drop step. Sonogo's own miss. Missed it again. Wessels a little bit more size. Bothered a couple of shots from Sonogo. Two fouls in Saxon. St. Mary's has to hold on here for the next 3.30. You know they're going to attack the freshman inside is UConn. They're going to go right at Wessels. So Wessels getting some more run here off the bench. After Saxon picked up his second personal. Johnson with seven to shoot. Puts it on the deck against Calcaterra. Fakes the spin off high off glass. And he puts it down. Beautiful switch to the right. When they see Calcaterra on them late, they clear it out. And Logan jo Johnson knows he can take him off the bounce. Logan Johnson entering the tournament since February the 9th, averaging nearly 23 points per game. So we are inside of the three minute mark. Eight to shoot for the Huskies. Defensive habit so good for St. Mary's. High hands on every catch, and they're there on the catch. Newton from deep. Got it. 
That's a contested triple, his second of the game. 37% three-point shooter, we are tied. And Newton giving him a little boost. Johnson gets him reset. Now to Marshall Lonis. Inside, wide open, Wessels. He was open on the last possession and they missed him. He catches it that deep. All 7-1 of that young freshman can put that one away. Wessels, one of their Australian imports, didn't play at all in their first round game against VCU. Already looming large. Speaking of large, Sonogo, a little bit short. And already you see the difference in Wessels being up, doing the best he can against Sonogo. He can be aggressive, and maybe more aggressive than Saxon. He's got five fouls to use. Here comes Johnson curling into the paint. This is Mahaney against Jackson. Down to the box. Inside, missed it. Well played by Jackson. Good team. That pass deflected. Johnson to steal. There's those high hands. Johnson away for his teammates. They'll reset as we come up on the final 60 seconds. As they force the sixth Connecticut turnover. Johnson to the rack. Strong move. Couldn't put it down. Jackson. No go. Calcaterra. Splash. And Joey California puts Connecticut back in front. That's just knowing personnel in transition because Sonogo had the dunk, but Calcaterra, a great three-point shooter. Led the Big East Conference, in fact, this season at 45%. Huskies retake the lead. Here comes Johnson taking some contact. No whistle. Offensive rebound. Mahaney from deep. Got it! Mahaney playing with confidence. UConn, the last shot. Three-point shooting, a little bit more efficient on the St. Mary's side of the ledger. And Alex Dukas leaving this game done for the rest of the half at least, trying to get more on his status. I like Calpatero right here. Watch him come off this screening action. Gales are out of fouls, five seconds. This is Newton. He'll launch. There is another triple. And that was a deep shot. Tristan Newton, his third triple of the half. And Connecticut will take the lead into the halftime locker room. Tristan Newton. Aiden Mahaney late. Three triples. AJ, you just hate to see that. And this is one thing about St. Mary's. They've been able to stay injury free this year. In fact, they only had two different starting lineups all season, Debbie. And, and so they haven't been in this spot. Duke is their third leading scorer. He's their best three point shooter. How does that change things, assuming he can't come back? Well, as you can see, they're starting small with three guards. So they're going to have to be able to get into the gaps and score. They're going to have to knock down some triples. And they're going to have to be able to turn. Sonogo into a passer without Dukas and some extra size on the floor. So it is Marshall Lonis beginning the second half as Randy Bennett makes his change. Newton almost got caught in midair. Jackson. Marshall Lonis on his back. Outside to Newton. He had three threes in the first half. Sonogo hesitates. He's just too good. And it's too easy right now for Connecticut. We saw Harry Wessels on a couple of runs in the first half. Body him up, but now Saxon playing with two personals as we begin the second half. Here's Marshall Lonis down the paint, up off glass. So with this smaller lineup on the floor, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Driving in the gaps, they're gonna have to be able to make some threes. Marshall Lonis, a sophomore from Lithuania. Last year, 13 starts as a true freshman. So huge for them off the bench against VCU. They love to bring Sonogo away from the ball and then bring him back to the paint. They have multiple ways they can isolate him inside. 
So Tristan Newton to the free throw line for two. Best Coke ever? Only one way to find out. Take a taste. Foul charge to Aiden Mahaney. That's his first. Just under 90 seconds gone by in the second half. MVP Arena, downtown Albany. How about the game Tristan Newton is putting together so far? Three triples in the first half. Now he's getting to the free throw line. He's had a couple of triple doubles this season against Buffalo and Marquette earlier in the year. Yeah, Debbie, we touched on the void that he stepped in. They really lacked the lead guard, but he had been on Danny Hurley's radar for a while. He had a 25-point game against Connecticut his freshman year with East Carolina. Danny Hurley remembered that. And when the opportunity came to make him a part of this program, they did not hesitate. And what a decision that's turned out to be. The other thing is look for a UConn to get Jordan Hawkins going a little bit. He did not score in the first half. Second straight game, in fact, Hawkins played a scoreless first half, but he did explode in the final 20 against VCU. Here comes Mahaney, up off glass! Well, it has been a completely different Aiden Mahaney tonight. This decision-making, knowing that that hedge is coming, it's a great take off the bounce. And now, Debbie, without Dukas, they need Mahaney, they need Johnson, everyone taking a little bit more of the offensive burden on their plate. The first two baskets are driving to the basket. Again, Saxon, you can't take that ball face. Sunoco with a power finish. Debbie, it's a great point, just not smart defense from Saxon. Johnson taking out contact. Three drives to the front of the rim. I beg your pardon, it was Marshall Onis. All that experience made his professional debut in Lithuania at the age of 16. And already now stepping into some of that scoring void without Dukas. See, you push him up the lane. Now don't give up the ground. Keep him outside the paint. Here's Sonogo stepping there. Not that time. Saxon clears. It's the quality of the catch for Sonogo. It has to be further away from the basket. Marshall Lonis underneath. Saxon couldn't squeeze it. But they catch a break. It's last touch by Newton. And the Gales will retain with 18 on the timer. I'll get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament at NCAA.com. South Carolina advances. Iowa advances today. <laughs> Two of the best players in the country, Aaliyah Boston for South Carolina and Caitlin Clark for Iowa. We will be hanging out at the women's tournament later this week, and we will be watching. Next. Here's Mahaney, step back. Freshman playing with some confidence as Newton comes out of the fray with it. On point Huskies lead. This was the part of the game where Connecticut pulled away from Iona the other day. How do they fare here tonight? Boy, Saxon gambles playing with two personals. And Sonogo turns it over, seventh by the Huskies. It's a simple thing, but it's about real estate, right? Look, push him up the lane. Don't let him catch it deep. Smart play by Saxon. And Saxon can be a little more aggressive based on the way Wessels played in the first half, right? Good point. Because you know he's got five fouls he can give. I think you know that you've got that option off the bench if you're Randy Bennett. Just under four down by and a half. Here comes Johnson to play by. All their baskets have been layups at the rim in this second half. Logan Johnson, their leading scorer, fifth-year senior out of Mountain View, California, and St. Francis High School in South Santa Clara County. He's put St. Mary's back in front. Newton. And a loose ball foul against the Gales underneath. Again, from the report, from AJ, officially his return questionable. You just feel awful for that young man. Again, their third leading score. He left at the 452 mark of the first half of what they're just calling a back injury. So just based on his body language and the way he's moving so gingerly, Debbie. That's tough, right? Hard pressed to think that we're gonna see him again tonight. So how does St. Mary's adjust? 
Here's Jackson. Gets middle, and he puts it down. Big basket for UConn. So the counter for Danny Hurley is post up that smaller guard backcourt with his size on the perimeter. Jackson grew up in Amsterdam, New York. He started Albany Academy just up the road from where we are here. Marshall Lonis into the paint, sealed off by Hawkins. Ten to shoot. Johnson wants to take Newton. Makes the spin. Missed it. Connecticut Huskies, 26 wins this season. With their first tournament win in seven years. Friday, here comes Carrigan. No! Sonogo puts it back. Just bigger and stronger at the front of the rim. 16 and 8 already for the junior. Marshall Lawrence in the corner, spins down to the box. Nice cut. Johnson, wrap around pass. Surgical as he finds Saxon. Sonogo hit the deck. So the Gales had a man advantage. One point game with just under six gone by in second half. Sonogo again camped out against Saxon, steps middle, and he's headed to the free throw line. Watch this interior passing, Spiro. It's a spin by Marshall Onis, a great cut when Newton turns his head and then a beautiful drop-off pass. The meantime, Debbie at the other end, that's a third personal on Mitchell Saxon, so Something we saw in the first half after he got into the early foul trouble. Let's see how Randy Bennett handles this here. Uh, As Obama Sonogo readies at the free throw line, 78% free throw shooter. And makes good on the first. TNT and TBS are your home for the intense action-packed Stanley Cup playoffs beginning April the 18th on TBS. Don't miss a minute of the action. Who did not play in the VCU game checks in here in the second half. So that's one of the counters for Randy Bennett is he has to go a little deeper into that bench. The fourth different reserve that he has used tonight. Barrett, redshirt sophomore. He appeared in 26 games this season, so no stranger to the big stage. As we cross the 14 minute mark, three point Huskies lead. Again, if you've just joined us, Alex Dukas back injury, third leading score for St. Mary's. Return questionable. As St. Mary's turns it over, Newton. They're so good taking care of the basketball. Caravan, get it! And Debbie, the madness continues. What a tournament. How much fun have we had here in Albany? Yeah, what a great scene this has been. St. Mary's, a little bit of a danger zone right now for them. As Connecticut has opened up their biggest lead. Johnson, my goodness, teeing off. Unable to finish. <laughs> you got to get two points in. You just got to. So the Gales again come up empty. Bringing some ball pressure right now. Picking it up on defense. Klingon is checked in for Danny Hurley. This is Jackson, seven to shoot. Up top. Off the feed from Jackson. And what's the call here? This is going to be a reach-in foul. If it's on Saxon, that's going to be his fourth. And indeed it is. Massive call against St. Mary's. So Harry Wessels has to check in, a freshman. I mean, Saxon first contests, then he reaches in. He was going for the jump ball. Mm. Jackson, smart play off the inbounds. Really good execution. Andre Jackson was so huge for them the other day. Ten points, five rebounds. He had seven assists against Iona. And he's given Connecticut an eight-point lead. Seven straight for UConn. 
now who does St. Mary's turn to for some offense? Right here, Logan Johnson off the bounce. Offensive foul, masterful defense from Newton. Newton jumps on that left hand. He is a lefty wanting to go left. It's an easy call, and that's the third personal on Johnson. They had the court opened up for Logan Johnson to attack off the bounce. Oh, so suddenly this looms awfully large for Randy Bennett. Look at the foul trouble. Logan Johnson, their most indispensable player. Has to be really careful now playing with three. You got to keep fighting right now. If you're St. Mary's, you just got to fight. Calcaterra lets it rip short. Then you throw in the absence of Dukas. How quickly can they regather themselves here against this fierce UConn team? This will be a reach in against Aline. UConn starting to flex. They've opened up their largest lead of the night here in Albany. What do you do if you're Randy Bennett here? How do you get their offense well, back on track? You go back to the small lineup because you had success off the bounce attacking UConn. And you know UConn's going to bring the heat right here. Marshallonis the kick. This is Bowen. Well played by Hawkins. Seven to shoot. Asking for some help. He gets it with Mahaney. Bending off his defender. Clay can get a piece. One of the leading shot blockers in the Big East. Jackson. This is Hawkins. Got it. And here come the Huskies. Live ball turnovers and the team speed of UConn. A bad combination for St. Mary's. Gales haven't scored in three minutes. Marcellonis, beautiful pass underneath. And that'll get Wessels to the free throw line. Let's throw it over to AJ. Well, guys, I can tell you during that last time out, Randy Bennett was telling his team they have to play with composure, especially on offense. And he said when UConn denies the ball past that three-point line, he wants this smaller lineup to take advantage of that and keep driving to the hoop and looking inside the paint. And he was keying in on Logan Johnson to have more composure but keep taking it strong to the rim, guys. That's the key, AJ. There's no question about it. The small ball lineup for him with uh, three perimeter players. You've got to get in the gaps. That's what we talked about to start the second half. And the other thing is, you can't turn it over against Connecticut's team speed. Their conversion from defense to offense is not something you're going to be able to defend. Yeah, Randy Bennett's got a lot in his mind right now. Not only the absence of Dukas and their offensive issues, but Mitchell Saxon on the bench with four fouls. So Harry Wessels, the freshman, thrust into a massive spot here. A couple of big free throws to cut it to nine as we come up on the 11-minute mark here in regulation. Here's Hawkins inside, and Johnson able to save. Great rotation by Logan Johnson. Into the corner, this is Mahaney. And the rebound corralled by Calcaterra. Look how quickly St. Mary's gets back and matches up. Clayton, vicious finish. Wow. Nice lead by Jackson. He's made some really good decisions, pushing the ball up the floor. The Hawkins triple, and then the dunk by Klingon. They work it into the corner. That is a massive three for St. Mary's. Bowen. Know about his defense, but boy, he can stroke it. 40% three-point shooter. Efficient from deep for Randy Bennett this season. Eight-point game. This is Kakatera, chased by Marshallonis. Alim. Well played by Mahaney. Seven of the title. Hawkins elevates. Get it! And Jordan Hawkins. Right back into it. Scoreless first half for the second straight game to start this tournament, but he is coming alive for the Huskies. Here's Johnson, puts it on the deck to the cut. Klingon butted the shot. Off the floor comes Jackson. On lean transition three, short. Just keep chipping away right here. Try to get to the front of the rim. Off the bounce. 
Bowen again lets it fly short. And the rebound controlled by Klingon. That's his fourth rebound. What a second half by Jackson, distributing the basketball up the court. Made some really good choices with personnel. Debbie, just reminds you how many different pieces Danny Hurley has. Hawkins, again, quiet first 20 minutes. He just has so many weapons at his disposal. Five to shoot. Hawkins rises a little bit too much. And Johnson for St. Mary's. They gotta execute Mary right here. They gotta get UConn moving defensively. Get him in rotation. Marshall Lotus, mm. or they come up empty again. And very few second chance opportunities against all that length of Connecticut. Calcaterra from deep. So the Huskies have pulled off here just a little bit. 12 point game. We come up on the eight minute mark left. Mitchell Saxon waiting to check in at the table for Randy Bennett. As they are running out of time. Trying to get their offense reignited. Bowen left open, he'll fire, missed it. St. Mary's has missed seven of its last eight shots. And this is where you miss Dukas because he can knock down those triples. He's the best three-point shooter for St. Mary's. Absolutely. Left the game at around the four-minute mark of the first half with a back injury as we get a reach-in foul here. It's on Johnson, and that is his fourth. Clinging the interior defense. Monstrous for Connecticut and the Huskies by 11 on TNT. And look at the discrepancy first half, second half through the first two games of this tournament. And it wasn't like he was taking bad shots in the first half. It's just now he's getting in transition. He's finding his spots. And I, I credit Jackson for finding him a couple of times and getting him a chance to get in rhythm outside the three point line. So Mitchell Saxon has checked back in. Sonogo on the floor for Danny Hurley. Hawkins step back three. Puts it down and he is starting to cook. They go screen, reject screen, drive baseline, fill behind the re-screen. It's a beautifully executed play off the timeout. Hawkins the sophomore, one of the sweetest strokes in the country. Here's Saxon, leaner, off glass, big shot for St. Mary's. Here you got to get Saxon back in, right? It's a good decision by Randy Bennett. Even though he's got four fouls, you don't have anyone that you can throw the ball in the block to. Now you can, it can affect your spacing, and maybe Bowen can get open from the three-point line again. Well, Debbie, now the question, can this St. Mary's defense, fifth in the country in points allowed, get some stops? Hawkins shattered by Johnson, rises, and it again. <laughs> That's just good defense right there, and that is better offense by Hawkins. He is a legit shot maker. Largest lead. Here's Marshall Lotus. Back rim. Newton has it. Off the floor. A little bit of a miscommunication. Sunoco keeps it alive nonetheless. Now backs down Bowen. This is going to be an offensive foul. Kelly Pfeiffer makes the call. Looked easy, a little bit overzealous that time was Sonogo. Jordan Hawkins that comes off the re-screen. The rejection and the drive to the baseline. He fills behind. And then that's just good team, better offense. On fire right now, that young man. Jordan Hawkins, again, scoreless in the first half, has scored the last nine for the Huskies. And he's got 12 in the half. And we still have six minutes left. This is going to be a reach in foul as Marshall Lonis was bumped. And as we cross the six minute mark now, left in regulation. Watch CBS Sports HQ for free 24 7 coverage of the big dance and all the biggest moments in sports. Catch tournament highlights, picks, previews, recaps, and much more. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Foul charge to Hawkins, his third. Marshall Lonis can't find anyone. Now they're going to have to take a timeout. There's your score, 62-47. St. Mary's will inbound underneath with 5.57 left. There's Jordan Hawkins' mother, Jasmine. She's got to be awfully proud 
And the baby boy doing some serious work here on the biggest stage there is. Just the maturity that he's shown, you know, back-to-back -back nights. He doesn't score in the first half, yet has a big number in the second. On Shimonis bumped, he'll shoot a couple of free throws. And as the second leading scorer for UConn, that's how good they are, right. how deep they are, that he can have a struggle for 20 minutes and then deliver in the second half. You know, Debbie, the depth that they have, the talent, there's just so many unique parts of what Danny Hurley has. They defend at an elite level in the quarter court. They've got size at the rim to score with their back to the basket. He's got depth to play multiple ways defensively and on the offensive end with his perimeter game. He's got a lot of boxes that he checks in the NCAA tournament. Hawkins didn't score over the first 27-50 of this game, 12 points over the last six minutes, but he'll sit here as he picks up his fourth personal. In the meantime, two big missed free throws by the sophomore, Marshall Otis. The margin for error is so slim right now for the Gales. Newton turns the corner, missed it. And the rebound corralled by Joshua Jefferson, the freshman on the floor for the first time tonight. Here's Marshall Lottis, low pass. That's a turnover. Back-to-back mm. -back trips where St. Mary's comes up empty. Seventh turnover. Well, they've had a, a couple of trips to the free throw line where they get nothing. And as you said, margin of error. And then with Saxon on the floor, you've got to go to back to the basket, and they're trying to feature him without Dukas with the back injury he suffered in the first half. If you just joined us, Dukas left the game just under five minute mark of the first half. Back injury, according to the report from A.J. Ross. Haven't seen him since, and boy, the game turned from that moment. Sonogo spins, Saxon on his back, couple of fakes, just masterful. That's the power game with four fouls. And he catches it that deep, you can't help there. Second straight 20-point game for Sonogo to begin this tournament. The Haney's pass deflected by Jackson, and boy, the Huskies are engaged right now. Four fouls, spins off the contact, just carves out space. He's tough. He had 19 and 11 in their Big E semifinal loss against Marquette. 28 the other night with 13 rebounds and 20 more points tonight. That's Luke Barrett, kicks out to Mahaney. They reset for the shoot. Mahaney, well played, fires, missed it. Half way down, it popped out. And the Huskies with possession in complete command, up 17 points. Jackson poked away, there's the steal. Open floor, Barrett to the cup, Jackson. Boy, got a piece. But the officials say contact, as Doug Shouse makes the call, and free throws coming up for St. Mary's. Look at the hops on Jackson. <laughs> My goodness. I mean, his head would have hit the backboard if he was closer. The athleticism of some of these kids is just off the charts. And you just wonder, Debbie, what St. Mary's has left and what has been just a tremendous season. Boy, Barrett misses everything on the first. 27 wins for the Gales, certainly one of the best teams that Randy Bennett has had in his 22-year tenure out in Moraga. But uh, have they met their match here against a lethal UConn team? Remember, this UConn team was number two in the nation at the beginning of the year. They started the season 14-0, and Spiro. Then they right. that stretch in the Big East, and they lost five out of six. And they are playing some really good connected hoops here. Johnson the steal. Newton is back. Well, the last time the Huskies made the Sweet 16, 2014. And the round of 32 is a seven seed. They upset Villanova. Shabazz Napier, incredible. 25 points. They got to the championship game and there defeated Kentucky. Napier was the star again as they took the hardware home back to Storrs' fourth national championship.
in their rich, proud history. And now Dan Hurley, can he get them back to the college basketball mountaintop as they are 344 away from the Sweet 16? There's his wife, Andrea. College sweethearts at Seton Hall. She's been by his side ever since. Bob Sr., proud papa. Legendary Hall of Fame high school coach, St. Anthony down in Jersey City. Debbie, the nervous moments of a family. Oh boy. Absolutely. All this sacrifice behind the scenes that no one sees. The dedication that it requires. There's a team behind the team, that's for sure. That was Danny's mom, Chris. Hoping that they can pull through. In the meantime, Logan Johnson makes it a 14-point game. This Gales team has been so resilient. Do they have one more push? Newton, shadowed by Johnson. Single digits on the timer. Newton, up. They just have so many weapons. 16-point game. You heard AJ in her interview with Dan Hurley, what he talked about with Tristan Newton, how he infused confidence in him, told him this was going to be his night. Well, he has played really well. Johnson into the paint. What nice little hesitation. Couldn't put it down. St. Mary's very rarely has back-to-back -back mistakes. But UConn has put some pressure on them with their offense as well as with their full-court pressure early on. Here's Sinogo against Wessels, the freshman. Steps middle. Pivots and powers up for two more. I think that's been the greatest pressure that St. Mary's has seen all game is trying to defend Sonogo. He has been fantastic. Johnson pushes into the corner. This is Barrett. And we'll have contact here as the redshirt sophomore fought his way into the paint. Another look at Sonogo on the box. All game. He has used that footwork, plays the game low to high on the catch, and then goes to work when the ball gets in his hands. Seventh make it uh, eighth team foul against Connecticut, so one and one here for Luke Barrett. Uh, Piedmont, California. Only 15 attempted free throws during the course of the season. As Randy Bennett, when he's got some magic left up his sleeve, 220 left. To how far St. Mary's had to travel over 3,000 miles, Spiro, right? To play in basically a road game here with the house full of Yukon. Yeah, no team had to travel further than St. Mary's. So certainly a disadvantage. Five seed for a second straight year matches their highest seed ever in the tournament. Marshall Lotus nearly the steal. Here comes Jackson. Underneath, little shovel pass, and no-go. Just keeps on coming. 18-point UConn lead, and the separation and the pressure on the D came right here from Sonogo. 11 for 16 from the floor. 24 points to follow up his 28 and 13 against Iona, where he went 13 for 17. He has been fantastic with his back to the basket. St. Mary's, Debbie, led this game by one point, 39-38. Since then, 32-13, Connecticut just completely taking the game over as Marshall Lonis will earn a trip to the free throw line. Look at Sonogo's numbers so far in this tournament, 28 against Iona. Most of that damage came in the second half, and tonight, and you just wonder, Debbie, if this team is at its best, they're as good as anyone left, certainly in the field and overall in the country. I thought he did a fantastic job on his ball screen defense early in the game, the hedge on the Mahaney ball screens, and then his ability to get deep catches in the paint. Danny Hurley will get some of his subs on the floor with a buck 47 left. And the party beginning behind that UConn bench. 
winner of this one headed to Las Vegas where Arkansas awaits and it will be Connecticut taking that next step and what they hope will be a deep run all the way into April. Arkansas upsetting Kansas the one seed Debo Davis 25 points and eight boards. Ricky Council with 21 in 40 minutes of play. That's going to be a, a great backcourt matchup between Arkansas and Connecticut. Well, you get to this spot in the tournament now. There are no bad matchups. What a run it's been so far. Second off the clock, they will not get the shot off. And Samson Johnson turns it over with 116 left. That'd be the finality of this tournament. Part of the raw motion of what March Madness is. It's a tremendous season for St. Mary's, but their ride will end here tonight in Albany. Johnson underneath gets it to Bowen. As we are under a minute left, this will be a traveling violation against Bowen. Remember last year, St. Mary's, they crushed Indiana in the first round. But then in the round of 32 fell to UCLA in a 16 point loss. And that is where their journey will end once again. Second round of the tournament for a second straight year. Nearly the steal by Jefferson. Diara. Oh, kick and Kelly Pfeiffer says kick. Danny's going to send his son into the game, Andrew Hurley. And Apostolos Rumoglu for Connecticut as Hurley empties the back end of his bench. And that is a happy Hurley family. Both these coaches coach their sons. Randy Bennett coaches his son, Cade, and it's a proud moment for mom to see Andrew get in the game. Emmett Hendry has also checked into the game for Connecticut with 36.2 seconds left. Got a whistle here before it was uh, before the ball was thrown in. And this will be a one and one as Bowen is whistled. End of the road for Randy Bennett's bunch. And what a season it was 27 and 7, 14 wins in the West Coast Conference. Certainly one of the best teams that he has put forth. And as he continues to take this program to new heights. And Debbie, you lose Alex Dukas, your number three scorer. The margin for error was already slim against this Connecticut team. They just ran out of options. This little steal as Hurley had it, but he stepped out of bounds. I think this UConn team can make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. We have watched them here for two days. Their depth. Their size up front, their balance, their intensity on the defensive end, their elite level. Will you, post play. Some, will you like to make some bold predictions here on, on <laughs> national television? <laughs> I like them. Jefferson is fouled on a putback attempt. Representing the Big East well, Xavier and is has advanced. Creighton is up, leading in their game. No team has won more games in the Big East over the last three years than these Huskies. How far and how deep can they go in this tournament? They have got all the weapons as they close in on their 27th win of the season. Second free throw by Jefferson. Final 18 seconds. Entry danger zone. Johnson takes. Looks like we'll get a contact and a whistle here. More free throws coming up for Connecticut as they are 10 seconds away. 
Well, let's see what the call is here. Make sure they say jump. Still working the refs with 10 <laughs> seconds remaining. Like only Danny Hurley can. <laughs> St. Mary's still extending 7.6. I don't think the Husky fans like it. Inbound to Hurley. Five seconds. The Connecticut Huskies dance into Las Vegas and into the Sweet 16. First Sweet 16 for this program since 2014. That season ended with a national championship. What kind of fortunes will they have this time around? They're athletic, they're balanced, they're deep. They have elite guard play, they defend at a high level, they have Balance on the inside. They've got depth on the interior. They can throw it on the block and get a bucket from Sonogo. This is a well constructed, well prepared, ready to launch UConn program to the next level to the Sweet 16.